Hi everyone, I'm Diego, and this final volume focuses on 10 crocodile species. Please enjoy this final volume. The mugger crocodile lives in marshes, lakes, rivers, and artificial ponds of Iran, India, and Sri Lanka. They can feed on large animals like antelopes of all kinds, even deer. Here are the locations this type of reptile is found in. The New Guinea crocodile is a small crocodile species native to the island of New Guinea. It's now considered a distinct species, Hall's New Guinea crocodile, but regarded as a separate species. Here are the locations this type of reptile is found in. The Nile crocodile is a large crocodile native to Africa. It's also an apex predator. We know they were famous for hunting wildebeests and zebras who try to cross the Mara River every year. Here are the locations this type of reptile is found in. The Orinoco crocodile is a critically endangered crocodile because of its very small population. They can only be found in the Orinoco River Basin of Colombia and Venezuela. It's also an apex predator with estimations between 250 and 1,500. But over the years, the Dallas World Aquarium has made a comeback for these critically endangered crocodiles and one day, they will have a safe future, along with all the other crocodile species. Here are the locations this type of reptile is found in. The Osborne's dwarf crocodile is a dwarf crocodile endemic to the Congo Basin in the Democratic Republic of Congo. The Philippine crocodile is one of the two crocodile species found only in the Philippines. Here are the locations this type of reptile is found in.
The saltwater crocodile is the only crocodile that swims in oceans because they're saltwater. Saltwater crocodiles are the most dangerous of all apex crocodiles. They can kill up to five people, so we have to obey the rules when we want to go swimming or do anything we like. Here are the locations this type of reptile is found in. The Siamese crocodile is native to Southeast Asia and Indonesia. They feed mainly on fish and snakes, but they also eat amphibians and small mammals. Here are the locations this type of reptile is found in. The West African crocodile is related to the Nile Crocodile. It was once said that it was thought to be a Nile Crocodile until a DNA study confirmed its true identity. The West African Slender Snouted Crocodile is named because of its very long slender snout that it used to catch fish and small aquatic invertebrates. They can also feed on large prey if it becomes available. Hi everyone, I'm Diego and this video is called Two Species of Wildebeests. One thing I know about wildebeests is because they can travel long distances to find food and water. They are primarily grazers and their main diet is grass. Bulls are larger than the cows and territorial, while the cows and their offspring travel. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a like and Subscribe. The black wildebeest is found only in South Africa. Females are shorter and more slender than males. They both have strong horns that curve forward like hooks. They also have a white tail. Here are the locations 
this type of animal is found in. The blue wildebeest is the largest antelope to have five subspecies. Males are larger than the females. They are also darker. Two of each subspecies have two different beard colors, black and white. One thing to remember is that they are famous for an endless migration between Tanzania and Kenya. Hi everyone, I'm Diego and this video is about 23 species of vultures. What I know about these birds is that they're primarily scavengers, feeding only on dead animals. They are found in Europe, Asia, Africa, North, Central, and South America. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a like and subscribe. Hi everyone, I'm Diego and this is Volume 1 on 8 Species of Old World Vultures. Please enjoy. The bearded vulture is a very large bird of prey. It's also closely re related to the Egyptian vulture. but it has a buff yellow body and head. Here are the locations this type of vulture is found in. The Cape vulture is endemic to southern Africa. It may resemble the white-backed vulture, but it's larger with yellow irises. The Egyptian vulture is a migratory scavenger bird that travels to Africa in the winter. Although they live in Egypt, there are three subspecies that live in the Middle East. The Himalayan vulture is native to the Himalayas and the Tibetan Plateau. It's also one of the two largest Old World vultures. The Indian vulture is native to India, Pakistan, and Nepal. It has been one of the most critically endangered species due to population decline caused by diclofenac poisoning, but we can help these endangered vultures make a comeback. The lappet-faced vulture gets the name because of the lappets on its face.
The palm nut vulture gets its name because of the palm nuts they feed on. But they can also feed on crabs, frogs, fish, locusts, small mammals, reptile eggs, and hatchlings. They can also attack domestic poultry and feed on carrion. The red-headed vulture gets its name because of the red head, much closely related to the lapid-faced vulture, but the beak is mainly black. Here are the locations this type of vulture is found in. Hi everyone, I'm Diego and this is two species of horses. One type of horse is domestic. The other is a Mongolian wild horse. Please enjoy. For many centuries, we have domesticated horses of any breed. They have become famous in popular culture such as the Ford Mustang and the football team Denver Broncos. We know horses of all kinds can go at very fast distances. The Mongolian wild horse is the only wild horse found in Mongolia. They have a short, stiff mane that stands up straight. They have two different coats. From spring to summer, their coats are short. In the winter, their coats grow longer and thicker with beards. When spring comes, they shed their coats to reveal their summer coats. Hi everyone, I'm Diego and this episode is a speech on 20 species of gibbons. They are the lesser apes found from northeast India to southern China and Indonesia. There is also one unique gibbon that has a throat sack useful for calling, the Siamang. It's also the largest of all the gibbons. So I hope you enjoyed this speech. Please leave a like and subscribe. Hi everyone, I'm Diego, and this episode is about four species of gibbons. This is Volume 1. Please enjoy. The Eastern Hulak Gibbon is found east of the Chinwin River, Myanmar. The Skywalker Hulak Gibbon is named by scientists after Luke Skywalker from the Star Wars franchise. It can be found in the montane forests of eastern Myanmar and southwestern China.
The western hulak gibbon is found in India, Bangladesh, and also in the western part of Chin Win River of Myanmar. The Siamang is the largest of the gibbons, found in the islands of Sumatra and the Malay Peninsula. They are also one of the unique gibbons with a gular sac, which is used to make resonating calls. Hi everyone, I'm Diego, and this episode is about five species of king snakes. To begin with these different kinds of snakes, they are the only types of snakes found all around North America. They come in different colors of brown, black, gray, lavender, red, white, and yellow that form rings, stripes, speckles, and saddle-shaped bands. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a like and subscribe. The Californian king snake is endemic to the western United States and northern Mexico. It's also found in a variety of habitats. The gray banded king snake is endemic to the southwestern United States and adjacent Mexico. They also have color morphs. The Guatemalan milk snake is a species of milk snake endemic to Guatemala in Central America. The Mexican milk snake is native to the hot semi arid regions of northeastern Mexico, but it can also be found in southwestern Texas. Prairie king snakes are mostly found in the midwestern and southeastern United States. Their range extends west from southeast Nebraska to eastern Texas. <laughs> 